Hello, hello, I'm Coco Sugar Cosplay and I'm back with another video sponsored by Fabric Mart Fabrics. Today, I'm gonna to be walking you through how I created a full cosplay look based on the artwork by artist jinxies.jj on Instagram. Today, I'm going to be creating a look based on her original character named Fauna, who is this adorable, like, doe, fawn, hybrid creature. She's so cute. She's got the cutest outfit and antlers and flower crown. I'm just all for it. When I first saw this artwork online, I knew I just had to recreate it. So without further ado, let me walk you through how I did it. All right, so I am starting off with the crown and I'm starting with the horns on the crown actually. And they're made using some pipe cleaners for a base. I start by twisting two pipe cleaners around each other for more stability. Using a piece of tape, I mark off how long I want the horns to be. Then, using the scissors, I cut them to shape and start forming them into the prongs that they'll need to be in the final version. Once I am happy with the general shape, I move on to the next step, which is covering the forms with aluminum foil. This will help to bulk them up a bit and act as a nice space for what comes next. For the next step, I'll be covering the horns in a layer of foam clay. The layer doesn't have to be perfectly even. The idea is to have some general coverage over everything and to have no more aluminum foil showing. After a quick sand and a base coat of gesso, it was time to paint these for real. I started off with this tan base coat from Platifex. To give these pieces more texture, I layered on stripes of hot glue. After I finished adding the glue, I finished up the paint job by adding in various layers of black, brown, and tan. Here's an example of the before and after of the paint job. To make the ears, I traced and cut my ear form onto some EVA foam. I used hot glue to assemble the base pieces together, painted them, and then covered them in some scrap faux fur that I had laying around. I used heavily watered down acrylic paint to color the fur. I went for a gray brown, which would match the gray of the wig and the brown of my skin. You'll notice I'm also using a pet brush here to brush out the fur. This is really important if you're using acrylic paints as they will clump the fur together if you allow it to dry. Once both ears were painted and dry, I moved on to assembling the crown. I hot glued all of the pieces together and used a little bit of paperclip wire as a base to secure it to the crown. I finished off the crown with some faux flowers and foliage from my stash. You'll have to wait till the end of the video for the big reveal. Next, on to some sewing. For the dress, I'll be using this ivory burnout organza and this eggshell sheer cotton. Both fabrics are light, airy, and have good drape and flow, and will be perfect for this floaty dress. For the vest, I'll be using a combination of this olive cotton jacketing and the cedar green suede suiting. The suiting is nice and has a good texture uh, for the outer layer and the jacketing has some structure and rigidity to it, which will help uh, the vest uh, lay well on my body. I created my pattern using a combination of this existing pattern of a bodice block that I have in my stash and also using one of my own clothing items, uh, this mini dress as a guide. After finishing my patterning on some newspaper that I had lying around, I then moved to cut out all my pieces. For the vest, I was able to utilize the bodice block and did not have to make too many modifications to it. Therefore, I did not have to make any new patterns for the vest. I started assembling the dress first. I started by searching the raw edges of all of the pieces. Then, 
I stitched the shoulder and side seams together, making sure to differentiate between the lining and outer layers. It was about at this point in the process, after I did a brief try on, that I realized that the dress didn't really have the silhouette that I was looking for. So I went back to the drawing board, remade my patterns, recut my pieces, and I was much happier the second time around. The second version of the dress sports a thinner neckband, a more voluminous skirt, and flutter sleeves versus the puff sleeves from the original art. Once I was happy with the second dress, I moved on to creating the vest. I started by stitching up the darts. Once the darts were in on both layers of the vest, I then did a basting stitch around the shoulder seams and the armholes. Once this was complete, I stitched up the shoulder seams and the side seams. I then made some adjustments to the neckline and hemline of the vest. Last but not least, it's time for finishing touches with some embellishments. I have buttons, closures, lace, all sewn by hand. And then, after it's all finished, you're ready for a final look. that's the end of the video thank you so much for sticking with me throughout this project it's been a bit of a long one but it was so much fun to do i hope you enjoyed the outcome and i hope you learned something uh, please give the artist a follow it's jinxies.jj on instagram and please check out her work it's awesome thank you again for watching and have a nice one bye